He, he's so young and I'm like, you know, he having to go through this. We really didn't see anything. Once he was going to get his physical, that's when I just started having headaches and just told, I just told him, I said, I can't take it anymore, so. We go to um, Atlanta Children's Hospital of Atlanta. They immediately put him in ICU because of the medicine that he had to be put on to, you know, get his blood pressure to be stable. You know, that's the only thing we really knew. Like, it really came like a thief in the night. My name is J.D. Palm. I'm from Keetron uh, High School. I'm in class of 2025. I think I was in like third grade. And it was, I was walking down the street and then some dude asked me if I wanted to play with the AAU team. And he was like, and um, he told me, he was like, you wanna play? I was like, yeah. So he was like, give me your mama info. Then I ended up playing with his team. And I was like, wow, I'm really playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? I never thought like I was gonna play basketball. I thought I was gonna play like baseball. Cause that was like my first love, baseball and football. And once I like started playing basketball, like I fell in love with it. I was like, this new I knew like that I wanted to do that. Like I wanted to go to the NBA. Um, well, he was always a playful kid. He loved outdoors, all the way from football to basketball to baseball. Probably around when he was maybe like eight years old. You know, and he started to um, want to go to the gym, to the rec center all the time and things like that. So I'm like, yeah, he's definitely gonna play basketball. He loves it, you know, a lot. JD is a six foot 10 inch, highly skilled, very strong, great size basketball player. He's got the wingspan of about seven one. Um, he's probably the fastest guy on my team. He's probably the highest jumper guy on my team. I think once he starts to understand what his strengths and what his weaknesses are, and not so much what everybody tells him his strengths and weaknesses should be, and once he starts to gravitate to those, I believe J.D. Palm will be one of those players that everybody won't forget about. Probably when I was in the eighth grade, when I started getting offers and stuff like that, then I knew, like, okay, I'm good. I'm good enough to get a D1 offer. I'm good enough, you know what I'm saying, to make it. It was uh, my last ninth grade game. We played, it's a, uh, it's a high school called Jeff Davis. I had scored 32 points in the playoff game, first, first round. That's probably one of my memorable moments. My most memorable moment, I would say, well, of course he played um, with a, a small group of basketball team that was from Dalton. But the biggest one when he um, officially started playing for um, junior high school where he was really showing out like everybody was like wow he's good you know he got his first dunk and I knew then I'm like okay yes this is definitely what he's supposed to be doing it was just him of being just the energy that he had when he was playing basketball the excitement on his face when he was playing and that really what made me like amazed at him it's like a light switch. Like he went from being like a trouble kid in the first grade, you know, just, uh, you know, wanted to be the class clown and things like that. So we're from that to now he's a quiet kid. He'll just smile, wave, hey, or, you know, he'll speak every day and need things like that. But I think he's more opened up a little bit more with, you know, speaking and holding conversation with other kids and even adults. He's very respectful. He's humble, you know, and things like that. I'm, Actually, I'm very proud of him. Two weeks before we moved here, he was complaining about a headache. You know, me, I'm thinking like he's a kid and he's always on his video games and he's up close to the TV. So I'm just thinking maybe, you know, it's just because he's actually supposed to wear glasses. So I'm thinking like, hey, JD, maybe you need to start wearing your glasses and stay away from the TV, you know. So we never really went in depth until we got here. I just told him, I said, I can't take it anymore. So I told her to go to the hospital and took her to the hospital, find out blood pressure was high. Then I had to get emergency, then I had to get uh, rest of the back. They put IVs, all sorts of things on me. And then they had to rush me to the children's hospital. Once I got there, they gave me like medicine, stuff like that, put me on IVs. Two days later, they opted to, you know, have a biopsy on his kidneys. Um, so they did the biopsy, got the results back within 24 hours, and they said that he had severe scarring on his kidneys. We also ordered to have a, um, a DNA, well I, well, I would say a 
hereditary test done to see because they thought they they said it may be hereditary because my mom had it so we had that test done and it came back that it was hereditary and that was the reason why he had the um the so it is in fact the same thing that uh-huh that my mom had yeah. mm -hmm. he takes peritoneal dialysis which is a different dialysis what my mom took my, my mom took hemodialysis which she had to be hooked to a machine she had to go to a dialysis center his is a peritoneal dialysis where he have a tube in his stomach that hangs out and he gets hooked up every night for eight hours a night. So we do it, I, I start his dialysis around 9.30 to 10 o'clock at night so he can sleep through it and it, he doesn't have any problems with it. Yeah, it's been tough, you know, just trying to get through it, just keep working, just have your mind set on one thing, knowing that you're gonna get better and just keep encouraging, keep encouraging yourself. The process of getting on the kidney transplant list, well, of course, you know, you have to have, your kidney function has to be very low, which his, his kidney function, of course, was low. He has to be up to date on all of his shots, which he currently is. He had to get the COVID vaccine. Because with the kidney transplant, they want you to be saying, hey, I take my medicine on time. I'm doing this on, you know, I'm doing this correctly. I'm keeping... Um, maybe your phosphorus low, your sodium intake low. They don't want to get you and you have high this and high that, but they give you the medicine to make it low and you're maybe not taking it correct. So we had to do that too. He was um, on the transplant list as inactive. Inactive meaning that he's on there, but he's not like emergency, emergency yeah. until he got put on dialysis. Yeah. So once he got put on dialysis, he was listed as active. My mama, she a donor, so yeah. And like when she donated, uh, if she not a match, then somebody else can give me a kidney that is a match, and then my mama can give them a kidney, stuff like that. So it can work out like that. But they, as far as the, us, them telling us about like when can we do it, no, nah, they haven't let us know about that. They have this program where um, it's kind of like a trade-off where um, we would still donate a kidney that would go to somewhere else, someone else, and the kidney that's next in line would go to JD. So it's basically a swap out. I think it happens more often we just really don't hear about it. I think it, it, it does happen more often than people are aware of it. Um, because, you know, just being in the hospital with him, it was, it's a lot of kids that's battling kidney problems. Whether it's due to diabetes or the same thing that he has, or maybe just accidents or things like that. But I think it's, I think it's starting to become common. And I think it's starting to hit people unexpectedly. Like it, you know, it hit JD. JD's one of the top player, ranked players in the country. Um, he's a unique, a unique basketball type. He has the opportunity to go play professional basketball and he's inflicted with this condition. So when you start looking at everything, it started becoming a natural parallel. So we needed somebody to kind of help pick up J.D. Palm's spirit. So and instead of me going to get my brother, who's not a basketball player, to talk to him, we got in touch with the probably one of the best centers to ever play the basketball game to show J.D., no, you're going to play again, but you have to get through this first. Knowing that Alonzo Mourning has walked the path that our kid is presently trying to walk on, it was something that's encouraging. You know, Alonzo spoke with him on the phone and allowed him to give, well, Alonzo gave him, you know, encouraging words and let him know like, hey man, it's not over. He said that it's actually better with technology and things how it is now than it was when he, you know, when he had it. Oh man, it was a pleasure to talk to an NBA, an NBA player that went through the same thing I went through. You know, he was just telling me about like how I should eat, you know, I should eat better. You know what I'm saying? Like, just have a lot of energy. You know what I'm saying? About the medicines he took and about the medicines I'm taking right now. And just a lot of things, man. Well, that's, that's gotta, you know, make you feel good to know that you, know, mm -hmm. you can't get through this. Yeah, it do. It do make me feel good. Yes, I encourage him. I tell him every day. I'm like, you're gonna write about this. You're gonna, you're gonna talk about this in your future. You're gonna give other children hope that may be going through the same thing that you're going through even later on down the line you're going to this going to be a testimony basically the so one thing we we learned from Alonzo morning 40 million people are dealing with this condition how many times kids are doing physicals and you know and they, for sports physicals that they kind of give the little you know we kind of brush them through physical and not the, the intense physical to understand when you pick up things like this blood work urine 
so on and so forth, cardiology, you know. I mean, there's a lot of kids we've seen before who are saying, I got headaches, and, or I don't feel good today, I'm aching, my energy levels are down. And we just say, you know what, let's just, let's just practice. Just get rest, take a rest, take a rest, or drink some water, when it really could be a real condition. And so that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to spread the word for JD, but we're trying to spread the word for all the people in the country that don't know what they got going on. He's not a quitter. He's coming back, it's stronger than ever. Once he gets this transplant, I have faith that he's gonna get it. Um, I admire him for being strong enough to handle this, not going into a dark place and being depressed about it and not letting him too, not letting it too much get to him. Just like never give up and just, just, just keep your head straight, you know what I'm saying? Just know that it's gonna get better. And just listen to your peers and your family and your doctors. Yeah, I see a lot of good coming from it, you know what I'm saying, reaching out to people that have this and just, you know what I'm saying, encouraging them to stay positive and like don't think negative. And you know what I'm saying, I'm young, you know what I'm saying, so yeah, it'll mean something for me saying it then for my adults saying it.